Hey there, YouTubers. Uh, in this video, I want to demonstrate a few things about Postman. So as you know, Postman allows you to make requests, HTTP requests, without a browser or without an actual program or program code. So you can use Postman to make requests. Here we have JSON placeholder. And JSON placeholder allows you to make different types of requests. You can also set it up locally by using this command. For this example, we're just going to be using JSON placeholder as is. So let's open up a new uh, few set of tabs for these. So let's take, for example, post, open that in a new tab. Uh, let's take comments and open it up in a new tab. And let's take, um, for example, this post one and then open it up in a new tab. As you can see here on the web, it has returned JSON to us. So post returns all these posts with user ID, ID of the post, the title and the body. When we query for comments, um, it looks very similar. I don't see how it's different in terms of comments. ID post one, oh, it's tied to a certain post. It has an ID. And uh, let's see, it is different than post. So it has the post ID, the ID of the comment, the name, the email, and then whatever the comment is. And let's not worry about that one too much. But we have here is a, what we have here is a user ID and we have a post. And let's see. So we have a, a post. And the ID, I think it's based off of this because if I was to change it to post four, for example, I could see a different one. But sometimes you may want to, you may actually want to run this in a way that you can do more with it. And Postman allows you to do that because you can even run unit tests on it. So if we were to run those same posts on Postman, we could take something like this and paste the URL into Postman. and send it off and you can see that we got the same exact result as that but sometimes when you're testing your own api you may run into an issue where you may actually want to write test or even if you don't write test you may want to have variable set so for example let's say that our base url here instead of having our base URL here, we can actually use a variable. And the way you call a variable out is by using these curly braces. And we could say base URL. Let's call it something different, URL one, because I already have URL. So as you can see, it's red. If I do base URL one, it's because I already have an existing base URL. So let's just call it base URL now, just to give it a different name. Uh oh. And so I have base URL now, which is going to be red. And what I can do in order to have this work, if I do this right now, it's probably going to fail. It can't get a response. But if I go over here in the settings, I can go to manage environments and I can either create a brand new environment. Let's say I create a new one and let's call this demo www. We can call it whatever we want. And let's say we have it and we have, we use the base URL. And our base URL will simply be the base of this because many times this will change if you're doing local host or if you're doing your uh, test environments or anything like that. You're probably going to have different environments, different URLs. So let's add this. And so now we have the demo www, right? And let's take a look at it again. We can click on it and see we have base URL. So say update. Okay. So here we can set our environment to demo and this should give us, uh, and this is actually base URL now. So let's go back in there and this has to be named now. The variable names have to match and casing. This is in essence JavaScript. So it is case sensitive. So. So now we have this, you notice it shows up orange. Now, if I make the call, I can make the call that way. Okay. And let's just say that, for example, that 
I want to grab a value out of this one to lead me onto the next item. So one thing I can do, you saw me set variables here and I can set variables in the environment or I can set global variables. You notice right now I have this post ID. Let's go ahead and remove this post ID so we don't have any uh, variables. But one thing you can do when you make your calls is to write tests. And this, in, in the test, you can actually set things up as well because let's say, for example, that you wanted to get JSON data. Well, before we do that, let's just set a test. So let's say that our test is Hmm. Just uh, okay. Let's say, for example, this test, and we send the request, and you can see our test results here, and it tells us that it passed. Okay, that's the test, and and this is just out of the snippets. But let's say that in this case, not th that yes, this one, we actually want to grab the value out. So let's say that we want to get the response body, okay, convert XML body to JSON. So we want to do that. Ooh, okay. No, we don't want that. Not XML to JSON. Um, okay, we want JSON. So we know we're getting JSON back and we can name our test whatever we, we want here. So let's just say we call it test one for lack of a better name. And we're getting the JSON data. Now this PM, is postman, it's a postman variable and it's getting the response and return it as JSON. And so now we can take the JSON here and we can say that um, we expect the value, okay, to be equal to 300, but our, our JSON data doesn't have a property name value. Instead, what we have is a property name length. So, so let's say that we wanted the length and let's just make it equal to two. We know we have more posts than two here. As you can see, we have one and two and three and four. <clears throat> I just wanna see you, so that you can see it fail. So let's go ahead and run it. And you notice that it failed. It said assertion expected 100 deeply equal to two. So now we set it to 100. It should pass because we know that it's 100. Okay, and we see it pass. Let's say for example that we wanted to actually uh, set a global set a global variable. So if we look in the snippets, we can set a global variable like this. And let's just put it here. Well, we, let's not put it in the test. Let's put it down here. So we set a global variable. And well, actually, it does have to be in the test since we are getting the JSON data there. So let's just say that we we are going to set something called the post ID, right? So let's just say that we're setting the post ID and the value of the post ID, let's just take and take the JSON data, JSON data, and we know JSON data is an array. So let's take the fifth one and then get the variable from it, which is ID. You notice because ID is here, we could actually get the user ID if we wanted the user ID. Let's just take the user ID. Let's also set another variable for user ID. Maybe we can use that later. So let's say that we have another variable called user ID and we're setting global variables. And in this case, it will be user ID. So now when we when we run the test, it's going to look the same. And as you can see, the test looks basically the same. The difference is that now when we come over here and we look in our managed environments, we look in our globals, you notice that we now have two variables that were set, post ID and user ID. What that means is that we can also take, and if we run this first, then we can run another post here. So let's take and copy this. And let's say that we wanted the uh, 
uh, post ID here as a variable. And then we just send this. And now you can see that we actually got the post ID six because when we ran this one, it set the variables up so that they can be used here. And that's how you get set the variables and access the variables. And you can see how we got them. Now, one thing about variables is also that you can use them just about anywhere. Say for example, that what I was getting was some kind of author authorization key or an API key or anything like that. And then I needed those keys for my next uh, call. Like in this case, for example, for my headers. Let's say, for example, that what I was doing, instead of doing that, that I was actually setting this stuff here and in my headers, I needed to have, let's say that I had X API key or something like that, or token or something like that. Let's say that I had something like this and my value, let's say was whatever value. In this case, I only have that variable, right? So I would send that out. Right, so I can use the variable right in here. I can use the variables anywhere. I can use them here. I can use them in the test result and not in the test result, but in the test. I can just use them just anywhere. So that's one advantage of that. So the other thing is that you can actually have multiple managed environments. If you have a professional version, I don't know what the free version, if you can actually share these uh, environments but with the professional version, you can. So I don't know, it's, see, I have to upgrade if I wanna share. So I can't work in a team environment unless I buy the, the pro version, but then I could share that with the team and then the team could do a lot of testing and then you don't have to wait on the actual code to be running. You can test all your endpoints. But that's about all I, all I have for this short video how to set variables, how to set them. Now, the other thing about it, what I didn't mention, one more thing, is that I didn't mention that you can actually set your global variables manually. You can set them manually and then just use them, or you can set you know, your templates.